Hello, welcome to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. In this series, we're going to be presenting a lot of little snippets on how a data scientist might get involved with working with Neo4j and why that might be a potentially beneficial thing. In this part one of our series, we're going to talk about how to connect to a free Neo4j sandbox database using Jupyter. My name is Claire Sullivan, and I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j. You can reach out to me on Twitter, or you can find several blog posts that I've written on Medium. So first things first is that we're going to create our own sandbox instance. Again, these are free instances that let you experiment um, with no strings attached to Neo4j. So let's do that. We're going to go to this web page here, which I will show you again in a moment, and we're going to click on New Project. Since we're data scientists, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for the Graph Data Science database, and we're going to launch it. And while it launches, and this can take a minute, what, we will, what I'll tell you is that this is a graph of Game of Thrones, the first five books, and um, it's looking at occurrences of characters with places and other characters and whatnot in the book. We can, or in all five books, we can take a look at it by opening this with the browser. This is going to give us a web interface to our database, and you'll see that it's, it's firing up the browser. If you happen to click on that and all you get is a blank screen, close the tab and reopen it because it generally means that the instance hasn't quite fully launched. But in just a second here, we have our web interface. Let me zoom in so that's maybe more visible. And here's what we see. We can see that we have 2,642 nodes representing things like battles and books. We have a variety of people in here, kings and knights and whatnot. Okay, then we have several relationship types. These are the, the ways that the nodes interact with each other, 16,747 of them. So we've got appeared in, interacts, um, we've got defenders and attackers, and that's all great. But let's talk about how we might deal with this database with Python. There's a few things that you're going to need to get for your connection. First off, we need the IP address and the Bolt URL for that database, which we can get here. We see that we have a username of Neo4j, which is constant across sandbox instances, and then we have a password. We're going to need all of these things in a minute. So let's go into Jupyter. Again, you want to create your sandbox instance. We also want to install the official Python driver for Neo4j, which you can just pip install here. Okay, so let's import um, from Neo4j. We're going to import graph database. Okay, so that brings in our, uh, our proper package here. Now we're going to need to tell the that database how to find our instance here. So we're going to go and copy that bolt URL into a string here, which we'll use in a second. And we're also going to grab that password. Let's go get it now. Okay. Excellent. So once we have those things, what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of driver. Okay, graph is going to be graph database.driver. We want that URI, okay, and then we're going to authenticate using our login, which is Neo4j, and our password, okay? So we run this, we got no errors, that is good. Okay, we now have a connection to the database. Let's, do, let's run a quick query to make sure that that connection is working. So what I'm gonna do, this is just cipher, match, round parentheses indicate a node, so I'm just gonna match all nodes, and I'm gonna return a count of them. Okay, so that n is a variable. So that's my string query. Now we're going to run this as a driver session. So with driver session as session, we are going to have some result, which is where we run in our session our query. And then let's print our results. We're going to print, this is just a single line of the result, which is fine because it's just grabbing that one line that's been returned and it's being returned as count n. Okay, let's close our parentheses and give that a run. And we see that we have identified that we have 2,642 nodes within that graph, which matches what we see within our browser user interface. So that's all great. Okay, now I've shown this in Jupyter, but you can also run this in Google Colab. Again, you'll have to pip install the uh, driver, which is just you know using exclamation point pip install um, like normal. Last thing you want to do, you want to make sure when you're all said and done, you terminate your instance. So you go to Actions, and you click Terminate. 
and terminating will delete all of our data. Yes, we want to do that. So thank you for signing in today. This is again the first part of the series. Please stay tuned as we start growing on, on this series. Think about how you might make those connections more sophisticated. Um, for instance, you could add things like uh, sophisticated error handling or transaction management, just like you would with any other database. Again, thank you, and I hope to see you out there.